I'm pretty sure I am. Was there a board meeting without me? <laughs> now, I'll give you some background on this. This all started to kind of come together to me last fall, and I'd heard all there was to know about trust law and all this other nonsense and tried to make some of the arguments in court. They don't listen to you. And it wasn't until I actually had to go and represent my corporation in court, my, my business, my construction company. And I got thinking to myself, well, geez, how am I going to do this now? I'm like, this is an actual registered corporation. See, you know, like, it's obviously I have to abide by city Winnipeg charter bylaws, right? Like, it's registered. How do I get out of this? And I got thinking out about it, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. No. I said, my signature created the corporation. It's the trust agreement between me and the government that made it an entity. I said, I put everything into it. I don't remember signing anything that said I was going to obey all government statutes at that point. I'm like, so no. I said, it does, nothing applies to my corporation. So I'm like, well, you know, piss on this. And I got, you know, I'm like, no, I'm going to go down to that courthouse and I'm going to show who's, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell them what's what kind of thing, eh? And thing, I didn't do that, fortunately. I went down there that morning and I just walked up and, you know, you all get in line for the, to go see the city prosecutor, if anybody's ever been to court against the city, right? They don't have a crown, they got a city prosecutor. And then you got provincial prosecutors and federal prosecutors. Like, they're all different. Federal, provincial uh, crown and federal crowns. But anyway, so the city of Winnipeg's got a city prosecutor because the city of Winnipeg's its own entity. They got to have their own prosecutors. And I walk in there, and there's this guy, uh, and there's a lineup of people, and he's just yelling at these people, and they walk up. People are taking up their fines, and they're like, you know, his name. And they're like, uh, you know, I'm so and so. He's like, well, the city of Winnipeg charter says this, and you are required to this, and blah. And he just, he's just talking like a complete jerk to these people. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> and I'm looking, and I, right away, I take my keys out, and I give them my buddy. I'm like, take my keys. You're driving the truck home. I said, because I'll, I'll be in jail kind of thing by the time I'm done talking to this Yahoo. And I get up there, and he just finishes yelling at some woman. And he turns around, and he's like, uh, and he goes, uh, who are you? And I said, well, I'm here regarding the matter for, you know, blah, 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 Manitoba Limited. He's like, all right. He goes, name? I said, my name is President and Chief Executive Officer of that corporation. He goes, oh, oh, um, okay, um, uh, uh, wh how did you want to proceed today? I said, well, there's not going to be a hearing, there's no need. I said, I haven't seen any paperwork, I've seen nothing, and said, in fact, I'm going to need your mailing address because I got some stuff I want to send to you that I need clarification on. Oh, uh, Okay, um, uh, hang on, I'll get, I'll get a business, uh, oh, I don't have any business cards with me. Uh, I normally carry some, uh, I, I don't have any today. And I was like, well, shit, if this isn't the same guy that was just yelling at people a couple of minutes ago. So I said, that's okay, just write your name down, you'll have my response in a, you know, a couple of days or whatever. I said, I'll, you'll get my paperwork, la, 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 and he starts writing all his stuff, and he's like, uh, okay, and he's, uh, if I haven't heard from you after, uh, I don't know, like a, like a month, uh, uh, would, would you like to schedule another hearing? He goes, how does, how does uh, you know, March, March 26th sound? And I just said, I just, I didn't say anything. I'm just like, and I stared at him for about 15 seconds. And he goes, uh, how, about, how about April 16th? I didn't say anything. I just kept staring at him. He goes, how does April 26th sound? I said, okay. I said, I'm okay with that. I think that should be plenty of time for you to get back to me uh, with, uh, with the response to my paperwork. I said, thank you, and then I left. So about two weeks later, I sent him, and that's where I used to get it. I started talking to you guys, the Freeman meetings, about how important it is to establish your title at the top of the document, right? No one cares about Bob playing hockey. They want to know what position he plays, right? When the, when the, the chess pieces, I don't care what you name them, you want to know what they're responsibilities on the board are. What you're acting as. What you're acting as, right? If, if a knight moves forward four spots instead of going forward three and going one to the right, the rest of the chess pieces are going to be going, what, what, the, what the hell? No, 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 that guy's only supposed to move forward three and over one. That's what's important. So, you know, names are irrelevant. Like, like I said, after the word man, your name is irrelevant. It's your title. What role are you playing? Well, today I went to court as president, chief, and executive officer of that corporation. And I'll be damned if his attitude didn't change about 180 degrees right after I said that. He knew damn well who I was. If I said Dean, well, well, Dean, <laughs> what do I care what your name is? We're enforcing city Winnipeg statutes against your corporation, right? Because they're going to operate on the presumption that I'm not the director or anybody else because that's how they operate in presumptions, especially if you hire a lawyer. We won't even get into that nightmare right now. 
So I sent my paperwork off uh, about two weeks later and it was three pages long and most of it is irrelevant but the biggest parts were that I stated quite clearly in there, nobody is administrating City of Winnipeg Charter bylaws against my corporation. Nobody. Because I set policy for my corporation and nobody else. I told them, I said, I don't know how you guys even called a hearing without my explicit written consent because I'm the chairman of the board and only I call meetings for my corporation. If you call one more hearing for my corporation without my written consent, I'm charging a million bucks and I'm charging it straight to your law license and I'm going to go lean it. And then I went on from there and I listed a whole bunch of things like that. Three weeks later, uh, my friend's down at court again for one of his own matters. He's sitting in the gallery. I didn't even bother going. I didn't care at that point. And the, crown, or the city prosecutor got up that morning and basically the first words out of his mouth when court was called, because remember, they, they can't just drop the charges when court's not in session. It has to all be done on the record. Everything they do has to be the, a record of it. So the first thing he did when, uh, when uh, court was in session, he stood up. He said, uh, Your Honor, you know, bowed, and they did their little whatever thing they kind of do. And he said, uh, ah, he goes, it just occurred to me this morning that uh, the city of Winnipeg uh, uh, charter uh, is only, uh, only applies to legal persons. So uh, I'm going to have to state proceedings against every corporation before the court today. So they didn't want to do it to just mine because that would have been proof. So they stayed proceedings against every corporation before the court that day, even though we all know legal persons are corporations anyways. They just blanketed it out and then afterwards they'll go back and they'll pick up the charges against all, everybody else. But all showed on the record for that day was that they stayed proceedings against every corporation just to make sure that I wasn't in there. So no hearing would be called for my corporation. There's no question. I'm convinced about that. And pretty much since then, I really haven't had a lot of problems with anybody, actually. Um, but that's kind of when we started to realize, OK, well, we got to start treating the legal person like a corporation. And we started to break down the corporate structure and trust law. And we started to realize that once we become the sole shareholder, which we are, once we realize who we are, and we realize that we actually are the ones who appoint ourselves if we need to, because we're just operating in different capacities, then the only role left for government is down here, that, which is where they are anyways, which is public trustees, employees. So they're employees. It doesn't matter who owns that corporation, whether it's Irrelevant. or anybody else. You're still an employee. Right? Who sets policy? Who's in the position of authority? Yeah. Right? Well, so we started sending... contracts with the corporation. Yeah. You're working for me. So we started sending people into court where basically uh, uh, a friend would speak for another friend and they'd go in as the administrator for that legal person. So when the hearing was called, they stood up and they'd say, yeah, I'm here regarding that matter because the matter before the court is the hearing for the legal person. We've had people in the past go in and be, you know, uh, yeah, I'm here regarding that matter. Well, who are you? Oh, I'm an agent of that legal person. Well, of course you are. You wouldn't be here if you weren't an agent for the legal person, because the agents are anybody acting in any capacity for that legal person. So when you're an agent, you could be anybody. So that's where the presumption comes in. So they're just presuming you're one of those guys, trustee. And when you're a trustee or an employee of the government, you obey your commanding officer, and that's the guy sitting at the bench. Right. But if you came in and said, I'm the The minute you walk in, you say, yeah, say, I'm, I'm here, I'm the administrator. Or, or the direct, whatever you want. I'm the director, I'm the, I'm the president and CEO of that legal person. I don't care what you say. You're establishing your status, your, your, your authority with that court on the record. Now, believe me, um, every time that we've done this, immediately before that sentence is even out, I'm here, I'm the, I'm the administrator, the sheriff, or sorry, the, well, yeah, the, the judge is yelling and the sheriffs are called in. <laughs> what are they scared of? If that wasn't a big deal, then, you know, they wouldn't be freaking out the way they do. And so the, the one time I know that my friend sat down and he just goes, I'm not going to jail today. I got to be at work this afternoon. He sat down kind of thing, eh? So he submitted to their, their authority. That doesn't mean you submit to their jurisdiction at all. It just means, you know what, this guy, this guy says he's this guy. You walked in, you said you were the, uh, the director of something. And then this guy over here, Public trustee, public employee, I don't care what you want to call him, he's a public employee, I like that word even though. The minute you walked up and said, I'm this guy, and the public trustee said, oh yeah? Sheriffs, we need sheriffs, I think we got an imposter here. And you go, oh shit, and you sit down. 
Well, I guess you weren't really him. They bluffed you, you lost. And you'll, you'll go to jail, they'll throw you in jail for that. Because you're a subordinate and you were being insubordinate. That's contempt of court for them because you were disrespecting uh, a superior officer, basically, which is one of them, and that's contempt of court. Okay, so we'll call it, we can even call this administrator. I don't really care. Administrator. Why do you say you're the executor of that estate? Yes, I like that one. <clears throat> but I, get, I, I just get away from a state law altogether to trust law. When I'm, in, when I'm speaking with government or courts, there's no reason to get into trust law. That's why I kind of made it more simple this time, because if people treat it for a corporation the way it is, it's much easier to understand the roles that are going on, right? And it's all you gotta do, be, all you gotta do is be the sole shareholder, the sole beneficiary, and you hold the seat of power, period. Because these people appoint the administrators the administrators set policy for public trustees, and then public trustees carry out their orders for the benefit of these individuals. So you could say, in court, I'm the beneficiary, I appoint you as administrator. Oh my God, why would you want to do that? Well, I know, I know, but some people do that. Yep. That Seriously? Yeah. And they probably just go, Thank yeah, you're damn I'll right. Be happy about it. I'll be happy to admit that. Yes. Yeah, that, that was something that, uh, you know, after I. Your first lecture, I was saying, boy, they really screwed up. <laughs> oh, they, you have no idea. Well, that depends. You know, the judge might decide to be benevolent that day and just say, oh, man, yeah, that guy just appointed me. Just like a nice guy. That guy just appointed me the CEO of Microsoft. Oh, I man, I like that guy. You know what? I'm going to go easy on him. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, what was it? Because it, it dawned on me, like, even like, two weeks ago in your first lecture, you know, like, I remember when my parents died, I was obviously the beneficiary of their estate, and yep. also the administrator since there was no will. Yep. Uh, and so that struck me, oh, yeah, I guess I am the administrator for that legal person, yeah. the beneficiary. Yeah, because uh, you know, that's why when people have power of attorney for someone else, mm -hmm. you basically are acting as them when they're not around. Mm -hmm. It's just giving you authority to, 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 to not, not to be them, to, to, uh, to act in the capacity that they would if they were around, right? Which is probably that guy right there. So, and there's, I can get in, like we've gotten to a lot different, bigger stuff where I could, this board would be full of stuff by the time we're done and everybody would be running around going, what the shit is he talking about right now? And there's no point getting into that because it's all just proofs of what I'm showing you right here anyways. And this just makes sense, it's corporate law. It's, it's the most, it's hidden in plain, you couldn't hide something in more plain sight. Because it's the same way I run my construction company already. And I'll be damned if it didn't get that response when I walked into court there for the bylaw violations. And as soon as I told him who I was, and I don't mean Dean Clifford, I said, no, no, I said, I'm the president and CEO of that corporation. Well, holy shit. You took charge. Yeah, the big boss came down. Now, that, that gets me into another thing where this is, some of the stuff I'm going to say right now, I, a few people that I, I, that I talk with on this frequently disagree with me. But it's my firm belief that the courtrooms are not for any of us. Courtrooms are platforms for public trustees. We're not meant to go down there. So that's why it's assumed we're just another trustee when we go down there. So I touched on last time how, how a lot of us were thinking, well, maybe the judge is acting as this, and you know the Crown's acting as this, and everything else. Well. No, if you receive a paycheck from the government and you're a government agent, then you're one of these. You can't be anything else. That'd be operating outside your mandate. You are only a public trustee, an employee, and that's all that is in that courtroom. So now we don't even really go to court anymore. We just send the courthouse down instructions from the administrator and we follow proper procedure. So no, no, my, 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 my commands came down the, the proper chain of command. It wound up in the court file and that's why the judge reads the affidavits or any other materials in a court file because they're the commanding officer of all these guys. Maybe they're looking for instructions. You set policy. But if you walk into a courtroom and you just become another public trustee, there's no officer of your corporation there from, from up top. They're, they're going to enforce statute. Well, and that's another thing too. Is the only, statutes only apply to public trustees. 
And so we've touched on that before with other people. That's what a SIN number does.